Hello everybody, today we're going to learn how to paint space marine faces very quickly. Alright, so I just finished base coating the skin tone and the first thing I want to say is that I like starting from a darker color than what's considered to be the darkest skin tone color from GW. What I mean is that, as always, I'm using GW colors for easy to access for all of the new painters out there that usually have GW as a first brand. So in this case, GW's darkest skin tone would be Bugman's Glow, but I don't like it as a base coat, I like it as a first highlight. So what I, what I start with is a bit of Bugman with some black in it. As you can tell, there isn't too much of a difference, it's a bit of a br more browny color, but I like it as a deepest shadow. So the first step is to highlight it, and again, I'm using Bugman Glow. And all I'm doing is just painting the color in all the parts of the model that aren't the deepest recess. I'm avoiding those and I'm instead base coating this color here everywhere else. Not trying to do any fancy lighting yet, just making sure I have some deep, deep shadows. If you want to make this faster, you can, uh, you can wash the model. You can base coat in Bugman and then wash it. Like GW shows in their videos. I don't like washes personally. I think they take a lot of the control away from the painter. So even though my guys are usually for, for speed painting things, I will still not use washes like it you see it took me very little time to do these coat here but at least I had control over it so if there is anything wrong with it it is my fault it's not the fault of the paint like you know the problem with washes is that they usually dry weirdly you don't even know how exactly what exactly you did wrong and then I don't know it's difficult to control them and uh, I like control over my painting I like to be the one that's, you know, I like to have, the, I like to be the good painter, but also the bad one. So if I make a mistake, it's my fault. I can't blame the paints. So we have done this, this coat and it's already popping a little bit more. So now we go in with some cadmium flash tone, still from GW, and we pick out all the details that are looking at us from the front. Like I'm looking at the face and everything I see that of course isn't a deep shadow is going to be highlighted with this color. So I'm going to keep some parts of the model in Bugman to push the contrast. And again here, in this specific marine, he has a lot of uh, texture in his face, so it is good to try to preserve it as we paint. But even if we make a mistake and we go over it, we can always go back to the first darkest color and black line to get back the, the shadows. Again, try to have coverage of your paint, which means that sometimes you will have to go back and redo some of the highlighting I've done just to get complete coverage because otherwise uh, when paint isn't covering well it looks dirty so even if the highlight is placed well with the right color like right value right everything if it's not cleanly coated it'll look odd make sure you have complete coverage while at the same time trying to preserve that separation line between one color and the other so always make sure your strokes your brush strokes go in the direction of where you want the most pigments to be i don't know if you've seen my guide on glazing but uh, that one i expand a lot about the subject talk a lot about how important it is to direct the, the paint where you want it to be We go 
almost done. Just cleaning up a few things. There are some aspects to faces that are very difficult to paint, like the little, the little thing just outside of the eye on the bottom of it. That thing requires good eye lighting on it and also good shading to bring, you know, interest to the eyes. And that thing is very difficult to paint when you are a beginner, but unfortunately I have no tips for you. Because painting faces is one of those things that requires brush control more than anything else. Like, it's not innately difficult to paint a face. It's just a matter of uh, controlling the paint and making it go where you want it to. Okay, almost done. Getting the now I'm trying to blend a little bit. Like, the paint is a bit more diluted. And I'm dragging it across the model, going towards the, the highlight I've done, so that uh, I create some, some nice blending between the base coat and this color here. Okay, we have, we have the first highlight set. The next step is to highlight it yet again with some Kisler flash. This time, being very careful where we apply it, we don't want it to be everywhere, otherwise we're going to kill the contrast. So just put it on top of the cheekbones, under the eye, here we get some good highlight, the forehead, and again, as we said earlier, this model has some texturing to it, so we want to try to preserve it and highlight it, but also having some shadows happening at the same time. The tip of the nose is very important. And the chin. This guy has a bit of a butt chin, so you need to highlight it like separately, every little sphere separately, leaving some shadows. Top of these ridges here, could use some highlighting just to try to bring the attention towards the the nose and the eyes. You always want the attention to go towards the eyes, so you need to direct the eye lighting in such a way that it brings the viewer's eyes there. So usually our eyes are most interested when you see the most contrast. So in a face you want to have the brightest colors towards the eye because they're also going to be matched with the darkest shadows, you know, under the eyes. Under the ridge of the eyebrows, they're going to be the darkest shadow, so you're creating some nice, nice contrast there. But also, you don't want to overdo it because otherwise, all the colors you've done before will die and you will lose all semblance of lighting. Only the top things top of the mouth, top of the, top of the chin. Eyebrows. Okay, and you could stop here if you wanted. You could stop here, or you can make it even brighter. This is a tough choice, but uh, let's just do it for, for the sake of the video. I'm going to use an ivory color. And <laughs> people will usually tell you not to use a white to highlight a skin tone, and they're right. You shouldn't want to use a white. But uh, these uh, these ivory. I'm using it isn't really a white, it's more like a yellowish white. And if you add it very, very carefully to your your brightest highlight, which is Kislev in this case, you're not gonna make it too whitish, you're just gonna highlight it. Very carefully though, you don't want to overdo it. So we have this very bright highlight here, and we're gonna put it on the tip of the nose. Again, always go smaller and smaller in your lighting, otherwise you're gonna lose all the work you've done prior tip of the nose, the eyebrows, like here, maybe here if you want, and 
and in this specific case trying to edge I like the texturing this guy has on his forehead gonna be nice bring some contrast to the model maybe the tip of uh, the upper part of the little bridge in and again the top of the mouth very center of it There you go, we have the skin turned on. Now we need to do the teeth and the eyes. So we can use the same exact ivory I just used, which in case you're wondering, it's a game color on white. I just randomly picked it from the, from the thing, but it works. So we can use this one for base coating the teeth. Let me make sure I am in cam. And also the eyes at the same time. It's a very good color, so. Why not use it? Some people prefer to paint the eyes first, and they would be right. There is nothing wrong in painting the eyes first. If you are afraid of making a mess with the, with the eye colors, it's better to paint the eyes and then the skin tone around it. Also, one thing, you will see people move models around like 180 degrees when they paint eyes, and there's a reason for it. In case you were wondering so i'm left-handed right and you just saw me paint the eyes the eye on my left very quickly and very easily just facing the model like i did everything else but when it comes to the right eye i have a problem because i can't reach it well right so my only way to have the right eye on my left so that my hand can reach it quickly and easily is to turn the model around like this but most of you are going to be right-handed so you're going to have an easy time painting the eye on your right and then you're going to have to turn the model around to paint the, the other eye. So I'm just turning the model around. I'm also to be in cam for you guys. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay, so we have the eye base coated. We could make it brighter if we want, but for the sake of this guy, I think we're good like, like we are. Just gonna get some black now to do dots for the eyes. And again, there isn't any really, any really good way of doing this except just doing it. it takes a bit of effort in learning how to do eyes. And the dilution is usually, you want to dilute the paint more than you would dilute a layer, but you also want to clean the brush so that the paint doesn't flow out of the brush as you touch the eye. Otherwise you're going to wash it. You want to have as little paint as possible, kind of well diluted, so that it looks like an ink more than, a, more than anything else. And also if you make a mistake, like I just did, you can clean the brush and then scrape it across, across the surface so that you get the black of the iris off of the model without ruining it. Because if the paint was a bit more thicker, you would have to wait for it to dry. But in this case, you don't because it's kind of a wash. So again, clean the brush. Just little dots, get them out, see if they match. We don't just redo them. Fortunately, painting eyes is annoying, but uh, kind of must be done for the sake of uh, for realism. But if you make a mistake and your black is too big, you can just go back to the Follow you used for base coating the eyes. Clean it up if you want. There is no rush in this. No, not really at all. You can redo this as many times as you want until you're satisfied. I 
and I'm rebase coating the eyes and just cleaning it up. But I do like the skin tone, I think it works nicely. Actually, while we wait for the, for the eyes to dry, we can push this highlight a bit further on the skin tone and just make it like this. Trying to preserve the highlights. We see this one. You don't want to kill what you've done earlier. You just want to push the contrast. But in order to have it, you need to have all these colors in. Otherwise, you're going to end up base coating with the last highlight and all the shadows and everything will be lost. So try to be as precise as you can. Take your time. Painting faces well takes a little bit of time. It is, I mean, you can speed paint them, but they won't look, they won't look good. We have this color here on the eyes, so we can try again. And I don't mind making you see me fail because it is something that that's missing from YouTube. I feel I feel like not enough people show themselves fail. Like everybody, not everybody, but most people are trying to look good for the for the viewers, and uh, they will do cuts and stuff, but. I actually wanted to see the struggle of this because there is a struggle. You won't be able to be good at painting if you don't put your time into fixing the mistakes you do or learning things. What I just did uh, was picking out the, the base color and use it to shade the underside of the eyebrows, bring some contrast. I don't feel like this. Why this uh, bone color is strong enough? I'm gonna be using a brighter color just to get some more contrast out of it because I think this black isn't popping enough against the bone color I used. So we just redo this a third and a hopefully last time. On the teeth, it works well because teeth aren't usually pure white, but uh, for the eyes, you want a bit more. Uh, Okay, so while that dries, what we can do is add a bit, black, a bit of black to the base coat and do what's called the black lining, which is going around every detail that is connected to the face and trace a little line to separate the two so that they look, there is, you, you're increasing the contrast. Also on the skin tone itself, if you, if you found yourself like going over some of the shadows you wanted to preserve, you can bring them back like this. Again, pushing the contrast to the max. It's always a good idea. I'm feathering a little bit. Then you can always do go back and forth and just pick colors back. Like, what I, what I want to teach you mostly in this guide is that there isn't really, I mean, there is a recipe for everything. But what is important is that you learn how to train your eye in understanding what's missing from a model. Like, I noticed that the cardian color, like the mid-tone color, was kind of missing on the cheekbones. So I went back and, and got it back in. But there is no, no rule to this, because like when you follow a guide to the letter, if your hand isn't as steady as the one making the guide, you will never be able to follow it. Because you're going to make a mistake and then you're going to panic, not knowing what to do. And then you're going to drop it or just, you know, I'll fast the paint job. I want to show you that there are ways to do it. And the, the only way to do it well is to figure out what's missing. So look at your paint job through a critical eye. Following guides is very important. I am making them. 
but uh, it's also very important to you know learn to think by yourself i can give you a color scheme i can give you like an idea where to place the highlights i can give you everything but the brush needs to go on the model and the hand that holds it is yours it's not mine so i it's gonna be difficult for me to to find a solution to all the problems in Going back to the teeth, trying to make them look a bit more interesting. Underside of the mouth, trying to get it to look shaded well. I'm doing all of this while I wait for the white in the eyes to dry completely so that uh, I can paint the eyes again. But again, you can see that the model is, face is taking shape. And all I'm doing is just looking at the model piece by piece, like the cheekbones and just the cheekbones, not the full face, just the cheekbones. And look if there's something that I feel it's, isn't right there. And if there is something that isn't right, I try to understand what is it so I can fix it. Okay, let's try again with the eyes. Time should go. Again, place the, the, the dot, the, the tip of the brush against the model and then very gently do like a circular movement. You're going to create a little bit of a, a dot. There. Okay. Good. Now we can go and fix shadow on the side of the okay and now we can black line which is actually easy for the eyes it's much easier than you think you just need to dilute the paint quite a lot and then clean the brush and uh, then just with the tip with on the bottom of the eye and since the paint is kind of diluted it's gonna drop and uh, flow itself in position just try to have as little paint as possible on the brush Here, stronger if we want, just to bring some. Okay, we are good. I hope you guys, you guys enjoyed this quick guide. It took me longer to paint the eyes than painting the model, <laughs> the, the whole face. But yeah, this is a nice way to bring very quick contrast to a skin tone it doesn't really take much effort just brush control so if you find yourself not having success if you looked for a guide on how to paint skin on a space marine face the reason probably is because you're having issues getting the paint where you want it to go and the only suggestion i can give you there is to just keep practicing as much as you can i stream five days a week eight hours a day on twitch so please if you want to See me paint live, ask me questions live, see me answer live to you, and enjoy some company while you also paint. Please come check out the Twitch channel, you'll find the link in the description. And if you have any questions or ideas for new videos, please let me know, alright? I hope to see you guys on Twitch and in the comments, and thank you so much for watching, have a fantastic day. Bye bye!